Hello troops, uh, Spectre N7 here. Uh, before I start this video, uh, this is part three of my how to make your Nerf Pulse Rifle HVZ worthy. Uh, first thing I need to do at the start of this video is I need to give a shout out to UK Nerf War, who talked me through how to uh, basically rewire this for LiPo without damaging anything in your sensitive electronics. And also to Foam Data Services, whose video I use for MOSFETs. Uh, and have done since I started in this hobby. Uh, here we go. So the Nerf Pulse Rifle takes four C cell batteries. Uh, so normally outputs six volts and that powers the motors, it powers the board. Um, and because this has obviously all the sound effects and the ammo counter and everything else, there's a bunch of components in here that are quite sensitive and you don't want to put the 8.4 or even 12 volts and change that you get from a 3S LiPo uh, through this board. It'll, you know, bad things will happen. Uh, the magic smoke will escape. Now, what this does, what this is designed to do is to make this as easy as possible, because as you can see, there's a lot of silicon in here. There's a lot of uh, circuit boards. There's a lot of things that are doing things and a lot of them are interlocks. So, you, you know, they do things for the ammo counter or for the sound effects that are done for uh, that basically they all work together. So the ideal way of dealing with this is to absolutely minimize the amount of modifications you need to do because you could do this because this is basically a turbine internally. There is the, the Buff Daddy turbine cages fit just fine. This is the 43 millimeter turbine cage and that works just fine. Now you could just treat this like a turbine and you could pull all of the tech out and make it work and you still have a perfectly serviceable HVZ blaster. But if you want to keep all the sound effects and everything, this is how you need to do it. So in addition to all of the boards and things that this comes with, I've added two additional boards. Now the first is this HX Mini 360 buck converter. And like a couple of pounds on Amazon, you can find any number of different solutions for it. But you basically need to make sure that your input voltage will go from between zero and 15 volts. Uh, so you're hitting your 2S or 3S LiPo fridge and it has a output uh, that will go to 6 volts. Now this one is an adjustable output. I have tuned it to 6 volts and it doesn't matter what the input is, the output of this will always be 6 volts now that I've tuned it to be so. Uh, so that means that when I plug in this LiPo, everything powers up. Now currently, uh, the ammo counter is showing two dashes. That's because as far as the bus is concerned, there's no magazine in it. Uh, so if uh, I push down this little switch, as if there was a magazine in present, it will now start to count. Now there is uh, this board here. And what that does is that both acts as the cycle control for the, uh, for the uh, yoke pusher and also as the ammo counter. So I can just push the trigger just now. And you can see that that goes down. Now, when I will let this go, I'm ha I, this is not as smooth as it will be when it's all, all assembled, but I'm having to push things and hold them in place. And then you see the ammo counter resets. Now, this is basically meaning that all of this power is coming in from this 3S LiPo. Uh, at currently, it's storage charge, it's about 11 volts. So it's like twice what this board is designed to, to, to handle. But because of the buck converter that we have, uh, which is very simple. You just wire it in on either side. Uh, it's even got little bits on it on this one, which has in and out, positive and negative, clearly labeled. And that way you just have the whole thing set. So no matter what you put into it, you're always getting six volts out. But the problem with that then is if you're, you're wanting to run hobby motors, so I've got a pair of rhinos in here, along with my, uh, along with the worker accurate uh, black wheels, uh, which is my standard Brit Nerf build. It means that I can put a 2S LiPo in it and get about 100 feet per second, or I can put a 3S LiPo in it and get 115, 120, which is great. Um, but if I wanted to, but obviously I don't want those guys just to get six volts because otherwise that defeats the purpose. So what we've also done is we've installed a MOSFET. So what this does is basically, I don't, you don't need to know how it works. Uh, it's basically a chemical switch. So this takes the signal from this board that would normally activate the stock wheels and instead activates the flywheels. You've got the main power loom coming back onto this side. So this is between the battery and the voltage converters. This is getting the full power from the battery going into the motors. And then the negative of the motors comes to the center pin of the MOSFET, which is the drain. 
and then your red cable goes to your gate pin and your black cable goes to your source pin. And basically what that means is that when this, block, this board here, which controls all of the, which is part of the brains of the blaster, thinks it's turning on the stop flywheels, actually what it's doing is flicking this MOSFET switch, this chemical switch inside this, trans, uh, inside this MOSFET. And then that basically allows power to flow through this MOSFET straight to the motors. And again, your 11 volts, 12 volts that comes out your 3S battery isn't touching any of the important components, any of the, the silicon, it's just going straight to the motor block. And that way you can get the full benefit of LiPo FPS without losing any of the benefits of the sound effects and the ammo counter and all of that cool stuff. Now, there's gonna be one more of these videos to come. Uh, I have a paint job to do to turn this into an N7 pulse rifle, and that will be coming very shortly. And as part of that, I'll also talk about the modifications that I've made to uh, actually make it uh, take standard Nerf magazines, but it's actually relatively straightforward to do. Uh, I have covered it in my part two video in a, in a sort of quick and simple fashion, but I'm gonna go into the mods in a little bit more detail in the next video. Uh, but thank you very much for listening. I've been Spectre N7 and uh, I should go.